as in a mirror, the history of civilization is reflected in our clothes. Now, it is more than the second skin, and fashion and style have become a way of self-expression. It is absolutely in style of the Kazakhs to see a deep symbolism, speak through things, objects, and rituals and material surrounding. Therefore, the history of national costume is a wonderful world, revealing our mentality. Today, every single woman, and especially a self-respected fashionista, cannot imagine her wardrobe without a scarf or two. Silk, cashmere, white or party-colored. Printed, there are thousands of options to choose from. And now, let us see how things were in the past. Scarf is a kind of accessory that will never become old-fashioned. In the past, in the present, and in the future, it will always be an addition to any woman's look and will always symbolize purity and femininity. In the middle of the 20th century, legendary actresses like Audrey Hepburn, Sophia Loren, and Catherine Deneuve, as well as First Lady of the U.S., Jacqueline Kennedy, used to wear silk headscarves as peasant style, tied under the chin making these accessories their everyday essentials. And now, these headscarves have become an integral part of models' runway looks. By the way, the above-mentioned women were big fans of scarves made by Hermes, as well as Queen Elizabeth II, whose portrait in the Hermes headscarf appeared on the British postage stamp in the beginning of the 1950s. Generally speaking, today, scarf is an interesting detail in every woman's wardrobe. And, of course, not only females wear headscarves. Men also don't mind highlighting their individuality with a beautiful scarf. And it doesn't matter much what fabric they are made of. It can be even made of wool. It all depends on where the person lives and what materials he has in his possession. Over time, fabrics have changed, as well as traditions. But the presence of a scarf, it hasn't disappeared from our lives. On the contrary, it has become popular again. And our contemporary designers find new ways of using scarves. They even make dresses from them. There is lots of information on how to tie scarves online. It seems that they it will never go out of style. It will always be a symbol of sanctity of some kind. Without a headscarf, it feels like something is missing from the shoulders. Scarves warm neck, chest and shoulders. Body parts that one always wants to keep safe. They make you feel warm and comfortable. I always carry a scarf with me. But when did the first shawls appear and what was their initial purpose? According to the world history, Egyptian pharaohs were the first to wear scarves as headwear. In ancient times, this element of clothing was meant to emphasize the status of the ruler. And also, it has performed its main function. It was protecting a person from the wind, dust, and sun. Likewise, warriors of ancient China used to tie silk scarves and not for the sake of beauty, but in order to protect themselves from wind and weather. Roman legionaries used their scarves to protect their skin from chafing it with armor. Of course, the history of scarf is very old. Every nation has its own customs and rituals associated with the use of scarf. People wore it not only in everyday life, but also while performing certain religious ceremonies too. Over time, scarves have acquired new functions. They became rulers and heroes' distinctive features. That was the reason why clothes, including headwear, have become somewhat remarkable. Unique artifacts found in archaeological excavations show us how functions of this headwear has changed over time. The most recent history of scarves can be traced in the works of local artists like Ablaihan Kasteyev, for instance. 
And speaking of scarves, it is vital to remember about their sacral meaning. If we look at a headscarf from a sacred point of view, then, of course, it can be considered as a veil that covers head and is mainly associated with the woman, mother of the world, and also with the mother of God. Veil of the mother of God is a well-known garment. It was associated with feminine energy too. Just like jewelry, it was covering sacral body parts. Also, child's top of the head that historically was perceived as a part that connects to the cosmos. It had to be covered at all times. In the past, we know all women wove. The mother of the world wove clothes, and so each person weaves his own pattern of life. Vertical and horizontal threads symbolize combination of divine and human. In the past, ancient nomads attributed certain magical qualities to their headwear. Firstly, it was used to protect head and hair. And hair for Kazakhs has always possessed a sacred meaning. Our ancestors believed that power, happiness, wealth, success and luck depend on hair. In the steppe, clothing was not just a way of demonstrating ancient customs, traditions and nomadic lifestyle, but also a thing that could tell a lot about its owner. As the life has changed, the appearance of the steppe dwellers was changing too. And the costume of a steppe woman is a vivid example of it. Girls used to wear takia. There is a folk song called Hamajai. Let me sing it for you. It is a very popular song. The first line reads, There is an owl feather on Kamajai's head. Kamajai was the name of the girl. Little girls didn't wear headscarves. They were wearing uke with owls or other birds' feathers. And that was the case before they got married. And once a girl was getting married, she had to wear a headscarf. Unmarried girls were always seated at an honorable place. Why is that? Because Kazakhs had a saying, Jat Jurtuk, meaning that one day the girl will leave her father's home. She will once become a daughter-in-law, a kelin. The word kelin itself derives from a verb kill that means come. Because of a headscarf, people could tell that the girl was married and that she was a kelin. Also, headscarves were necessary for kitchen work because of the hygiene issues. At the same time, headwear was considered as a mean of protection for young women. She has to be respected in her new home. So the headscarf was like military epaulets, you know. Besides, a headscarf was like an amulet for a young wife. After all, a girl has moved to a new house, and her headscarf was telling the others that she is far away from her father's home, and that she deserves love and respect nonetheless. And if Sao Kilia was considered as one of the most beautiful and respectable women's headwear, a white headscarf also had its own significant role in females' outfit. White color symbolized that all good things daughter-in-law was bringing into her new family. It was associated with peace, wealth and family expansion because she symbolized future children. And for Kazakhs, kids have always been considered as the main value. 
That is why young ladies wore white headscarves that symbolized a bright planet and everything that was revolving around it. There are no words to describe our amazement by step people's wisdom and delicacy. Their etiquette forbade asking too many questions, especially personal ones. Guests, for instance, were not asked about where they were coming from and women were not asked about how many kids they had. Therefore, a lot of things were encrypted in people's outfits. And in this sense, headwear was the most talking piece of clothing. For example, by the way, the headscarf was tied on woman's head. What shape it had and what the ends of it looked like, it was possible to determine the region she was coming from. The color of a traditional Kazakh dress played a significant role too. This was also a mean of communication, because in Kazakh culture, each color bears a certain meaning. For example, red color, kuzil, is the sun. And, by the way, the root of this word is kuz, girl. Also, red color means fire. Lu is the sky. Green color symbolizes youth. As for the yellow color, as we know, the Kazakhs consider yellow as a symbol of wisdom, certain life experience, wise person. White symbolizes love to life, if I can say so. But of course, we have lots of other colors. Brown, for instance. Velvet fabric used to be brown. Brown is Kazakh's favorite color. We have lots of sayings with this color. Konir dombra, brown dombra. Konir daus, brown voice. Konir gel, brown wind. Of course, the wind cannot be brown. It is a poetic way of saying things. The most unpleasant color for Kazakhs is black. Black is the color of mourning. Mass garment production and abundance of clothing has spoiled us in unimaginable ways. We can now afford wearing clothes for beauty's sake only, whereas in the past, the situation was completely the opposite. Kazakh clothes were functional. There was a clear distinction between casual and festive outfits and colors and patterns of clothes were the ways of making people look different. For example, at any celebration, it was easy to tell women apart just by looking at their headscarves. The family that was organizing the wedding, there were a lot of women in simple headscarves. These were daughter-in-laws. And among the guests' family, there were lots of females wearing large headscarves. These were the guests and honorable relatives who were not bothered with wedding preparations because of their status. Daughter-in-law would perform household duties. That's why they used to wear practical clothes and headscarves. There are also bigger scarves, woolen shawls. They are called dubut or romal. There is also shawl, shale. The one that women used to wear over their clothes or tie in this simple way, it can be of different colors. At the end of the 19th century, Kazakh clothing, including headwear, began to look slightly different. It was due to the influence of various economical and socio-cultural factors. In the pictures of Soviet period, we can see a completely different fashion. Nomads have settled down, their traditional costumes were replaced by urban outfits, and women started wearing factory-made headscarves. Later, headscarves with flowers on them appeared. The country has changed a lot. Lots of fabrics were brought from abroad, and the production of new fabrics began in the Soviet Union as well. And there were also fringe scarves, shashak, in Kazakh, from the word shashu, to scatter. Shashu, you see. And these were not young brides anymore. Women who were 30, 35, 40 used to wear these headscarves. They were called kilinshik. As it is well known, the Kazakhs have always been extremely polite and tender towards their women. 
They cherished their daughters and prepared them for a life in new family in advance. Many farewell rituals related to daughters' weddings are performed today. One of them is the exchange of rings that symbolize good wishes between the in-laws, Kudahi Juzuk. Also, scarves were used as a mean of communication. By sending colorful scarves to her family, young wife was telling her parents that everything was all right. To mark this good news, a family could even organize a small celebration. The Kazakhs are still honoring their old tradition of exchanging gifts at the weddings. And it is impossible to reject these offerings. By giving them away, hosts are sharing their happiness and joy. And every single gift, whether it is a souvenir or a candy, is a good wish saying, may the happiness come to you. And the most common gift that women receive at the weddings is a headscarf. It is believed that if unmarried girl receives a headscarf as a gift at a wedding, she will soon be married too. There are traditions that are still preserved. For example, if a woman or a girl visits someone, the host must have a scarf that she can present to the guest. This is a good benevolent symbol, because scarf is considered as a wish of luck and prosperity. There is also this interesting tradition among young men too. In the past, every man was wearing a belt decorated with various gems and buckles. And once a man was leaving for a military campaign or somewhere else, he would leave a piece of his belt to his girlfriend. And the girl would give him her headscarf in return, the headscarf she has personally embroidered. By embroidering the headscarf, girl invests into this work, filling the garment with her positive energy. The tradition of embroidery is very ancient. Technology and patterns were transmitted from generation to generation. It is a kind of artwork that possesses incredible power. That is why the headscarves, especially those that were intended as gifts, were always decorated with embroidery. I think that handkerchief or scarf that was embroidered by man's beloved woman, his mother or sister, is something that gives power and awakens heroic spirit, something that motivates man for heroic deeds. And, by the way, did you know that the first woman who tied a silk scarf around her neck was Louis XIV's lover, Louise de la Valier? This was a mini fashion revolution performed by her single-handedly because before that moment, only men used to wear scarves. The Sun King, main European fashionista of that time, had hundreds of silk scarves in his possession. It was only the noble people who could afford this accessory back then, the accessory that later became a forefather of a modern tie. Another interesting historical fact is that for many people, the image of a Russian woman was usually associated with a headscarf tied under her chin. However, the fashion of wearing a scarf this way originated from Germany and was appropriated by Russians only in the 18th century. And this accessory became so popular in the 19th century that it influenced the appearance of the dance called Pas de Chal, which translates from French as Dance with a Shawl. It is a solo or group performance accompanied with soft lyrical music where dancers play with a silk scarf. Just imagine how stunning and graceful it looked in the beautiful interiors of bourgeois dancing halls. But not only well-mannered Europeans were using scarves as a dancing attribute, but also Tatars, whose culture has an old folk dance called playing with a scarf. Similarly, Bashkir women danced with their headscarves too. Bandanas, kerchiefs, scarves, shawls, all of these are numerous variations of the most ordinary scarf. Over the years, this list has only expanded, but the materials from which this accessory was made have always been limited to traditional fabrics, silk, wool, flax. Natalia Polyansky, one of Kazakh batik and felting artists, has found her own style and fabric. Her shawls are bright, zesty and light. Even the most capricious fashionista will find them attractive.
When I create my garments, I always think about our woman's needs. Some of them like it bright, others prefer it plain. Although the shawl is considered as an art itself, it is a practical thing. It is a piece of clothing, after all. It is a garment that will be worn by a woman once a day or even once per week. And that's why, when I participated in UNESCO's contest, I created a whole collection of scarves that I called Rainbow Pattern. All those scarves were of different colors, each of them corresponding with rainbow colors. I was thinking about a woman that wants a yellow scarf today, and tomorrow she would want a red one, the day after tomorrow, blue. Because we are this way, we love changes. I have made scarves that can be worn by women on different occasions something bright or something dark, whatever she feels like wearing. I was always interested in working with colors, and I always tried to use bright colors because we are part of Eastern culture, where people like bright colors. Bright colors that come to life on initially white silk are a true work of art. Batik came to us from Indonesia, from Malaysia. It is a couple of thousand years old. That's when they started to decorate their fabrics with paintings and colors. It is a national art in Malaysia. And there is one day for all Malaysians when all employees, civil servants, private sector workers and children put on their traditional batik outfits and come to work and to schools like this. The thing is that silk is considered as one of the safest materials. It does not cause allergies, and some even say that it is useful to wear silk garments if you suffer from thyroid diseases. Not synthetics, not wool that is irritating, but 100% silk. Ornaments, flowers, animals, or abstract design. Each work is different to another. Every single scarf requires a lot of time, patience, and perseverance. Today, the artist can't even remember how many scarves she has made, how many of them now adorn our girls. But there are some orders that Natalia still remembers. I had once an absolutely amazing and very unusual order, a romantic one. A young man wanted to present his girlfriend an unusual gift for the 8th of March. She had one favorite photo. I made a sketch of this photo, featuring two of them with the evening sky in the background. He also wrote her a romantic poem. So I made a scarf with this photo on it and placed lines from his poem, where he declares his love all over the scarf. It was a fabulous order. I was making it with a huge enthusiasm. It is a time-consuming process to make a scarf. It can take from several hours to several days, depending on the complexity of the order. Once the garment is ready, it needs some time to dry out, and only then it is ready to be warm. Today, one can find thousands of ways of using scarves on the internet. How to tie a turban, make a top, wrap scarf as a skirt, decorate a dress with it, and many, many other options. This square piece of fabric that was once used as a head cover can now help any girl to change her look and style effortlessly. Isn't this a great example of a garment evolution? The scarf that survived through the centuries has now become a multifunctional piece of clothing. <laughs> 